it'd be quite good to kind of take it from the beginning and say you know you know what are entities you know what is semantic seo yeah. and why why do we care why do we need that okay it's really important i mean i think it's really important and that's why we kind of invested this this kind of uh, this this angle at it all, all the tools before about 2015 must have or 2017 must have been based on a keyword understanding because we all looked at the uh, looked at seo based on keywords you know what's the keyword volume for this or is it a long tail keyword or a head tone keyword and that's kind of how seos still think about you know the world they kind of assume that somebody is typing in buy pizza in birmingham and 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 you know and then they care about whether they're di- typing in buy pizza in birmingham or um or um get pizza or you know or, or whatever all these different yeah. phrases around the same concept um but ever since google bought metaweb um and freebase which is basically a a, a machine um encyclopedia for want of a better word so it's an encyclopedia of ideas and concepts um in, in a sort of easy to machi- read machine readable format um google has been moving from thinking about things in terms of keywords and, and move towards things in, in thinking about things in terms of topics. So um, when you have a, a sentence of text, you can read through that text and say, okay, uh, this is, is this about a tower or is this about a bridge or is this about tower bridge? And you can run uh, what we call a natural language processing algorithm over there and break the content down into its constituent parts, its ingredients really, you know, basically the ingredients for this web page are Tower Bridge, um, Cycling, and London, and uh, and Thistle Hotel, or whatever. Um, so you've got all these different things that are on the page that it's talking about it, and these are the ingredients of the page. The order in which you put them in, I guess, is is what makes up the the context. Um, so by doing that, Google completely changed the way in which they're organising the world's information. Because before, they're trying to organize the world's information by here's all the web pages on the internet and this is what all the web pages are individually saying. Well, there's trillions of web pages on the web, well, on the internet at least, and, uh, and they're growing, you know, almost logarithmically. However, all of those pages are talking about the same sorts of things in different orders. So it turns out whilst there's trillions um, or, or hundreds of trillions of, of web pages, um, there's only hundreds of billions of ideas, mm. of concepts that make up those. So sort of the language of, of, of humans, you know, it's only in the hundreds of billions of ideas. So um, if they start thinking about things in terms of uh, entities and store everything in terms of entities, then you can take a web page and say, well, this is just reflecting an, a, section, a number of different entities. So you can then sit there and say, uh, okay, we're going to store the oil's information by entities. Now we know everything about a bow tie. We know where to go to find out how, how to tie it, how to make it, how to, you know, what color, what fashion is, is right. You know, so now we've got the concept of a bow tie and then we can then spread out from there. Because if we can understand that the user is interested in the bow tie and then they want to know to make it or to wear it or to tie it or to um, look good in it, you know, they, they can then use that to uh, to give context to the concept of a bow tie and then they can they can um, uh, take that information that way so you've changed the world they've scaled the world much better it also happens to be much more translatable because the concept of bow tie when you turn it into um, item number kg471456 it doesn't matter whether the bow tie is whether the reader is thinking in in English or in Russian or in French Mm -hmm. or in Japanese, it's still a bow tie. So so you've got a machine language in in terms of the the definition of all these things. But then you can sit there and say, right, okay, this this page is talking about bow ties and fashion and uh, and, um, statements and and London. Um, So now I can deliver this information back uh, to, to, to the user or I can use this page over here to feed this understanding of what we understand about a bow tie. And the translation bit becomes very minor, actually. They can translate content very easily. So they don't have to, they can take some information in Japanese and it can be used to feed the knowledge graph. And then it can be used to inform a person that's answering or asking a question in English. So of course, these kind of ideas all go around Google's head, Googler's heads. 
and this is how they're developing the world. So to think in terms of keywords is a bit pants really now uh, because uh, the difference between buy a pizza in Birmingham and buy pizzas in Birmingham and Birmingham pizza delivery are really frankly all the same thing. Um, and if Google's gonna, gonna work that all out in the, in the, in the entity um, level, then um, writing for keywords is, is a little bit planned. Yeah.